an alternative to um, placing your individual images and sizing them one by one is to go ahead and to place all of your images in the original size, especially if they all started out to be the same size, and then sizing them all together at one point. So what I've done is to go ahead and place my um, six different layers of the different uh, live traces of Adobe that I made in Adobe Illustrator and left them all in an unrest, um, in a, um, and I haven't rasterized them yet because I don't want to rasterize them until after I resize them so I don't lose any of the details in my image. So at this point they're all layered as you can see and what I'm going to do is now to go ahead and to highlight one of my layers and holding down the shift key I'm going to highlight all of the other layers like so and then I'm going to go to edit and transform and to scale. And you can see that all of a sudden my image is scaled. Again, using the sh uh, sh shift, is it the shift key, I'm going to stretch my image like I did before. To and you can see that they're all expanding at the same time to the same size. And so at this point, I'm just going to tweak that one a little bit. It's transforming it on its own. Um, we'll go ahead and transform them. And now what I can do is, since they're all the same size, I can go ahead and I'll just go ahead and unhighlight one, make sure my brush is highlighted, touch my image, and I'll rasterize all of the individual layers that are here. Changing each layer to make sure that each one is kind of now taking its new form. And now they all are the exact same size. Once I determined and I made my canvas of my image bigger than what my image is, I can pretty much go ahead and crop my image too if I want, but realizing that I won't crop them, well, um, I can just go ahead and go through image crop and it would potentially crop all of them. So I can do that at this point also since I have extra space that's left on my image. So I'm going to image, I went to the crop tool and I just dragged down the size that I want. and. Um, I'm going to go to image and crop and now I have a smaller size image. Again now what I want to do is to create an order to my images so that I'm having the ones that tend to be heavier um, with more, Im uh, neg uh, more shapes in them towards the bottom and then ones with more detail towards the top. I've also added a colored image of my um, map so that that way I can also use it as a background. Um, and one other thing I may do is physically to add a background to highlight some of the white areas that I have in the color image of my map. So realizing that this image has a lot of um, value to it and this image has a lot of value, I'm just going to move these two down. And I'm leaving my color image as, as it is, and I can shut my background off for this point. And I'm going to go ahead and highlight this image so that once it's highlighted, I know that I can work on that image, and that's the one that I'm going to be adjusting. And um, I'm going to pretty much turn these other images off so that this way I'm only seeing these two that are here. Again, I'm going to go and choose my color. So I'm clicking on the color tab, and I'm going to go sort of with a brownish color exactly the color I wanted, maybe a little bit warmer, and push OK, which will now be my new color. And I'm going to go ahead and highlight with the magic wand the black part of my image, realizing that the contiguous part here is turned off, so all black areas of my print at this point are being selected. I'll then go ahead and click on the paint bucket and color my image. At this point now, I'll go ahead and to deselect my image and go to my next value, and I can kind of shut these off if I want, just so I can sort of see what this one looks like by itself. And this one, if we put this one on top of it here, and I'm going to make this top one, um, let's see, this one is normal, this one is in multiply, so I'd be able to see through it. This one I'm going to paint a different color, so again, what I'm going to do is to use the select tool, highlight it, all the black areas are now um, highlighted, go to my color, choose a color, and I think I'm going to kind of go with a little bit of a yellow, yellow orange color, choose that. And so now I have 
more colors, and especially because this is in multiply, if I change this level to normal, you're not going to see any of the colors that are below it. But this way I can kind of blend my different colors. And again, I'm going to deselect everything and add my next value, which will be, and I'm going to move this down a little bit because it looks like it's a little heavier. So um, here's my next one. And let's maybe make this one a blue. So again, go ahead. The image is shown. It's highlighted. I'm selecting it and then choosing my color. It's all very repetitive, so once you get one part down, you're pretty much good to go in what you want to do. Let's try this. And right now I'm leaving all my colors opaque. If I wanted to go ahead and play around with the transparency of the color, I could very easily go to where it says opaque and kind of play around with the scale so that I might make it a little bit more muted um, in the background. We can add a 